<laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Bland. He's doing that because he had me out all night like I was 19. <laughs> Like I got a nice, so now you know I got to twist my mind from uh, Marvin Gaye and Calvin Richardson to Paul and the Ephesians. So twist your mind with me. Come on with me to the book of Ephesians. Amen. <laughs> but you know what? I'm walking in the spirit. So even then I was like, you know what? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. That's right. Um, I praise God for his blessings. Amen. I thank God uh, for just um, being real. Thank him that he is real. He went on to say in that song that God is not a myth. He's not a fairy tale. Amen. He's real. I know he's real because he's real in me. I just appreciate him. I tell you what, I've called on him many times. When I couldn't call on anybody else, I've called on him many times when I didn't know what to do. And he came to my rescue every time. But I always say this, he never did come, you know, like I thought he was going to come. But he came. And when he came, it was right on time. I tell you what, I love the Lord this morning. Um, he is so, so, so wonderful. So we're in the book of Ephesians. And uh, we'll do a study this morning. And wherever the spirit stops, that's where we're going to stop. Uh, uh because that's just the way we're going to do it. Ephesians, the second chapter, if you will. Now, if you recall, we were talking about how when Paul first started in this particular book, how he was just talking to all believers, but now he's coming to a point where he's going to break it down. He's going to break it down, and he's going to talk to the Gentile believers. Because sometimes, you know, there were, um, in this particular instance, there were some tensions that had arisen in the church between Jewish and Gentile believers. And um, when, when we look at it, um, the reason why, then you'll understand. Because we're saved by grace and because we're saved for good works, Paul says in this book that we're saved for good works, not that we're saved by good works, but uh, when we are saved, do you believe that your attitude should change? Do you believe your attitude toward other people should change? Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Do you believe your behavior toward other people will change? It's just not, you know, it should. It should. It should. And so it ought to. And so um, he begins now in uh, Ephesians, the second chapter, in the 11th verse, and he wants to talk to the Gentiles, to talk to them particularly, to bring to their remembrance. He said, now, wherefore, remember... Remember, I'll stop right there with just that word, remember. You know, all we have to do is go back in our mind. Isn't that right? All we have to do is go back and think about where uh, God has brought us from. And when we look at where we are now, not to get so prideful and boastful about where we are now, but to take into consideration that if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I don't know where I would be. If we give God his due credit, yes. you know, so many times we want to take the credit. I, 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 I'll just talk about myself this morning, how many times when I'm in a conversation, how I'll, be, I'll talk about I did I this and I did that. And, I, and I'm thinking to myself, what in the world? It's not about me. It's all about him. And so he says, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. And so he wants them to uh, remember, look, he says that, uh, first of all, you, you, that's an insult. They're, they're called the circumcision, you're called the uncircumcision for a reason. And so he wants them to understand why and how this makes a difference. So the Jews look down on the Gentiles, calling them uncircumcised. And so you remember now, this is, so it's an insult because it's a reminder that the Gentiles were not in the covenant of Abraham. Go to Genesis, the 17th chapter.
we probably don't even have to go there. I know you know this, but, you know, this is just to give us a connection. We always said we like to connect the dots. Yeah. And so Genesis, the 17th chapter, this is how this all began. In Genesis, the 17th chapter, because when we talk about, when we talk about uh, the Gentiles and we talk about the Jews, one thing that separated them was the covenant that God had with the Jews. And so in Genesis, the 17th chapter, when we look at, uh, let's go down to um, verse 11. Are you there? The Bible says, and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is, and he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every man child in your generations, he that is born in the house or bought with money, of any stranger which is not of thy seed. So then those that were in the house or those that were slaves, they had to be circumcised as well. He that is born in the house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised. And my what? And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised man whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. So the Jews, again, looked down on the Gentiles, uh, calling them uh, uncircumcised as an insult to let them know that we have something that you don't have. We have something that you don't have. And that was we had the, uh, we had the covenants with God. God favored us. And so... Paul tells them then, go back to Ephesians, the second uh, chapter. He says, so remember, go back in your mind and remember this. Remember this. In verse 12, he says that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of covenants of promise having what? No hope and without God in the world. So then he's telling them, remember when you were without Christ, without citizenship, without covenants, without hope, without God. Everything that they were without, the Jews had. So go to Romans, the ninth chapter. And this is why the Jews, you can, and so I'm talking about, I'm leading up to why their tensions. Now, Paul is addressing, he's getting ready to address the tensions that had arisen in the church. This is why, okay? So we see that there was a difference between those who were called the circumcised and those who were called the uncircumcised. So in Roman, the ninth, Romans, the ninth chapter, and the fourth verse, well, let me start. Let me just start at the first verse, okay? It says, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenant and the service, oh, I'm sorry, and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises, whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came, who is over all, God bless forever Amen. So they had so much going for them. They had all of that that God had favored them with. He's saying that, not only that, but the Savior himself was of Jewish descendants. And so, it's, it's, so you can see how they thought 
that they were special. They thought that they were special. And so he says that not only that, you know, they always, they, get, they paid homage or uh, they honored Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all of the patriarchs. They Jews, Jews. And so we have something that y'all don't have. Uncircumcised. You're uncircumcised. And so how can y'all have the same benefits that we have when y'all never had the favor of God? But isn't it just like God to do what he wants to do whenever he wants to? We call that sovereign. God is sovereign. He doesn't have to check with anybody when he does something. He just does it because it's to his glory and for his pleasure. And so we go back to Ephesians, the second chapter. Paul says, I want you to remember that in times past, you had no connection, if you will. In chapter, in chapter 2, verse 13, though, two words, but now, but now. But now, in Christ Jesus, and so it makes it effective because it's in Christ Jesus, it is good to note that he doesn't say, but now in yourself, but now in your mother, but now in your father, but now in Christ Jesus. And when we take that into consideration, it speaks of God's very gracious intervention on behalf of those who were lost. And so when we look at it, he says, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes, who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. That makes me happy. That makes me happy. And that lets you know that it could not have happened if he had not made the ultimate sacrifice. And so we thank God. We just don't take it for granted, y'all. And it's nothing that we look at lightly. It was done by the blood of Christ. By the blood of Christ. And so uh, when we get ready to look at this particular section, we look at the word enmity. Enmity. Enmity and enmity has two folds, two folds. Enmity, now we're talking about the tension between the Jews and the Gentiles, and then enmity between sinners and God. Okay. And so, the reason they could come together, which is what Paul is saying, that was then. This is now. This is now. Now, Jesus is our peace, for he is our peace. In verse 14. For he is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. So when, when we talk about that, what we're talking about is the term again, reconciliation. He has reconciled not only Jews and Gentiles, but he has reconciled both to himself in the one body. And the one body is what? The church. The church, the church. So when we look back, God had put a difference between Jews and Gentiles, and he did that so that his purposes in salvation might be accomplished. That's to, make, to reveal the grace of God to everybody, Amen. to reveal the grace of God to everybody. But once those purposes were accomplished, there's no more, you didn't, it didn't have to be a difference because he broke down that wall. He broke down that wall. Now, here is where the tension is. This was a hard lesson for the Jews. It was a hard lesson. Because, listen, I'm going to tell you something. Once you've been sitting in a seat of favor, it's hard for you to come down. It's hard for you to come down. Oh, yeah, you just ain't, see, you can't, you don't, you don't, you know, you, you still got that air about you. And you walking around like, uh, uh, you know, you got your, you're looking down your nose at everybody because you feel in some kind of way. Like, uh-huh. You think that's why parents have problems with their children? Probably. 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 
Mm-hmm. That's the truth. Well, you know, you just made me think. <laughs> you, just, you, you really did. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm looking at VJ. Because, you know, right now, VJ want to tell everybody everything, what he want to tell me. You know what I'm talking about? And I'm looking at him like, boy, I'm your mom. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and that's true. That's true. Sometimes there's so many times we think our children can't tell us anything. You know, but they got sense, too. You know, but then again, you know, then I had to bring him on back to his place. Hey, Amen. But like I said, this is a this is a hard lesson. This is a hard lesson. This was a hard lesson for them because they had been used to sitting in a seat of favor, and so they the, there had been a difference between them and the Gentiles in religion, because we read in Romans nine where they had everything that the Gentiles didn't have. They had the covenants. They had the promises. They had the patriarchs, and then Jesus Himself. The Messiah descended from the Jews. They thought they were special. They thought they were special. They had special dress. They had special diets. And then they had special laws that separated them from everybody else. And so when we look at that, it all started back. Remember Peter and the Gentiles? Let's go over to Acts the 10th chapter. Acts the 10th chapter. Until then, the church had no problem. But you know what? When somebody starts messing with what they believe, you're going to have some problems. You're going to have some problems. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then this just shook up everything that they had believed in. And so in Acts the 10th chapter... Look at um, Acts 10, and, uh, well, we'll just look at that. We know where Peter had the vision, and, uh, you know, he was saying, you know, the sheet was dropped down with all the living, you know, the four-legged beast and all of that in it, and uh, said, rise, slay, and eat. No, 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 in verse 13. And there came a voice to him, rise, Peter, kill, and eat. In verse 14, Peter said, not so, Lord. For I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time. What God has cleansed, that call not thou common. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Mm hmm. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, uh, and so, uh, look down at verse twenty-four. Uh, so we, so of course, he went to Cornelius's house. And verse twenty-four says, "And the morrow after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them, and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius." met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. And so, um, go on down to verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respect of person. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. And so um, uh, go over to um, verse uh, 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. As many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. You know, they're looking like, okay, really? Really? Oh, my God. They can get what we have? Oh, my, oh, my. <laughs> and Lady Deborah, Hallelujah. you notice how when Peter says that in uh, verse 2, notice it, 
you notice how when Peter says that, he says he sees that God no respect the person. Okay, he got that far, that God telling him that you can talk to them the same as the Jews. But then he says, but, every, but in every nation, he, he that fear him and work of righteousness is accepted with him. You notice how he still doesn't have the message that was given to Paul. Right, right. He doesn't know that you're accepted by the blood. Right. And even Peter in his last uh, book and, and last writing, 2 Peter 3 and 18, he tells the, the, the Jews that you need to listen to Paul, but the things he says are hard to accept. And so I can't read into Peter knowing what God hadn't revealed unto him. Paul had to give this to him. Great point. And Paul doesn't say that really until Acts the 13th chapter, said that by Christ's blood, you can be justified from what the law never could. Mm -hmm. Peter is still preaching the law, even Absolutely. here in John 10, because that's all he knew. Thank you, Pastor Bland. And so, okay, so, so, okay, they were astonished. Some accepted it, but look, everybody's not going to accept a good thing, okay? So you just go right on over to chapter 11 and Acts. Just stay right where you are. Uh, and the apostles, I'm in verse 1, and the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with him. Now, we, we use the word contended. You know, that's using when you're boxing, you have contend with somebody. So they were not happy. They were not happy. They contended with him, saying, Thou went then to men uncircumcised and did eat with them. But Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it by order unto them, and telling them what had happened, what we just went over in uh, Acts 10. Uh, Peter was saying, look, I didn't do this of my own, but I was led by the Spirit to do what I did. And so he was reprimanded, and this reprimanded, and this resulted, if you remember, in Acts 15. Let's go over to Acts 15. This because they weren't, they weren't, they just, they weren't not accepting that someone else could have what they had. They didn't want to believe that. They didn't want to believe that. Uh, and so, look at verse 1. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. They did not want to uh, accept the fact that God had done something different. That God had that, that they were they were in a in a, a position of uh, favorite, if you will. But now they're not in that position. Now God looking at everybody like, okay, okay. And so the question at hand here in Acts 15, must a Gentile become a Jew to become a Christian? And so, of course, we know the conclusion of this whole matter was when uh, they met and said Jews and Gentiles are saved the same way. They're saved uh, the same way. Amen. And that's by faith in Jesus Christ. And so, Seventeen, you said, "Well, y'all don't have to go there." But I'm glad you did because you always see something you don't see. And what I what I had never seen before, when you talked about how circumcision was a token, a sign of the covenant, he said, "I'm going to give you this." Now watch this, Mother Nod. He said, "I'm going to give you this sign in your flesh." It was a sign in the flesh. In other words, this is what you do. And you see, God don't really recognize nothing except what he do. All right. So that was just a fleshly thing. Mm -hmm. That was only temporary. Just like we as children, we don't have the Holy Ghost, but we have parents. All right. And our parents' job is to correct us and to teach us what to do until we get the Spirit of God. Once we have the Spirit of God, then your parents have to let go and let All the right. Spirit Absolutely. Thank you, Pastor Blaine. Go back to Ephesians, the second chapter. This is good. 
So he says uh, again, for he is our peace. In other words, the enmity is gone. For he is our peace. The enmity is gone because he hath made both one and broken down the middle wall of partition. Uh, I have a chart, um, and I have a diagram. Curtis, if you could go, I think I have a, go to the, right there. Okay, just a diagram of the um, temple, just in a, in a literal sense. In a literal sense, there was a wall that separated the Jews and the Gentiles. The court of the, um, I, don't, I, I don't even know where my old clicker, uh, my, my old clicker is. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, so the temple, the temple proper. Uh, so if they were there, they could not cross, they could not cross over into the temple. You know, there was, they set a sign on the wall that says, that you can turn it on, Brother Barney. Thank you. That if you cross this, you, you will die. Mm-hmm. So there was a literal wall to separate them there. We know that uh, when you go to the Gospels, thank you, Pastor Bland. When you go to the Gospels, and you can go back to the slide before that, uh, Brother Curtis. The Gospel says that when Jesus uh, placed his head and the locks of his shoulder, when he gave up the ghost, the veil... In the temple was rent. It was torn in two. That was symbolic that now the middle wall of partition has been broken down and the veil in the temple is rent, signifying that you don't need anyone to come to him on your behalf, that you can come to him yourself and there's no difference between Jew, there's no difference between uh, Greek, there is no difference, everyone is the same. Everyone has the same access, Pastor Blaine. And Lady Deborah, I know that's why that I was miserable when I was over at the other church after I got saved because the whole time they treated me like I was trying to earn my way into a position that Christ had given me by me placing my faith in the death, burial, and resurrection, which is the gospel. When I placed my faith in it, you said, you said, he is our peace. Mm -hmm. But they kept trying to make me work for peace with God. You need to do this. You need to pay your tithes. You need to, Brother Bland, you need to do this. You need to do that. And, and, and they, they did some hurtful things to me. Mm-hmm. And the thing about hurtful stuff, you see, people always tell you, get over it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. When it's you. Because they don't want to, folks don't want to, you know, worry about it. If you've ever had anybody close to you die, you know sooner or later to keep that to yourself. Because if you bring it up around people, you can tell they don't want. Well, you know, you need to let that go. You, you, you need, but it, it ain't none of they love one. But when they love one die, then they want to fall out. You, you, you see, that's something called trauma that lasts after an injury. Yeah, absolutely. The injury is over with, but I'm still traumatized. And by them doing that. And that's really, it, it, it ain't a snowball chance in Hades that I'll ever roll back over there with them. And, 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 and because I, the farther away I get from you, the more I know how you mistreated. And I'm not saying they did it on purpose, but it still was, was the same thing. But that's a powerful thing that you're teaching when you say he is our peace. Mm-hmm. That means I can't lose my peace. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because you can get around the wrong negative people. You see, in your personal peace, you'll lose it. But the real peace that he wrought when he owned the cross and everything by faith. Thank you, Pastor Bland. And so now, with the middle wall of partition being broken down and the veil in the temple being rent, the Jews had lost their bragging rights. They had lost their bragging rights. Now, uh, everybody can come. Everybody can come. Aren't you glad about that this morning? And I'm, I'm so glad that, you know, when you look at 
you know, because surely we're all, it's differences in all of us. Some of us have more money than the other. Some of us have more prestige than the other, you know. And so if there was a difference, then some of us might get in and some of us might not. Mother, mother Nun. Uh, Lady Deborah, I tell everybody, and especially to myself and my family, that I'm so glad that he said, whosoever. 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 Yes. You know, that includes me. Yes. I, I, I can still, if you just said it, if it had been money, well, I wouldn't have a chance. Thank you, Lord. And, if it had been popularity, the show sure wouldn't have had a chance because mm-hmm. they always counted me the was one in the, in the whole family. So that left me out right there. Mm-hmm. And it um, hey. Thank you, Lord. You didn't have to do it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Thank you Jesus. Whosoever. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Came and went to the cross on my behalf. Yes, my yes, 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 yes. And I'm so glad. Yes, yes. It, it doesn't matter. Never to rise again. If you. I have a penny, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Whatever. He said, Lord, in your mind. Yes. Yeah. I'm so glad. So glad. I'm so Amen. glad. Amen. 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 Whosoever. That's what I said. Whosoever. He said, let him come. Let him come. And I'm thankful that I stepped up and said, I'm coming. All here. right. I'm here. I'm All right. Lord. All right. I thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God. I thank God. Yes. That I was able to get up this morning. Come on, mother. Come on, mother. Come on now. Come on now. Yeah. Come on now. Come on, mother. So I'm so glad. Yeah, yeah. I don't mean to worry with nobody. Last Sunday, Pastor, I'll get you no harm. And sometimes the devil tell me, you need to leave, and I know it's it. No. But I'm like you, I'll tell it. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't have to reflect back to last year, but I know the time. I had seventeen dollars for Christmas. Yeah. Come on, mother. Come on, mother. Man, you don't know God. I can't tell you. You don't know God like I know. You don't know God. And had been declared that my sons are was gonna be put on the street. Yeah. But the only thing he said, trust me. Trust. 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 That's why I tell the young people and the old people, you better get to know God and better oh, yeah. know and you better learn his word. Get it in your heart, so because you're trying not smart the devil, he won't do it. But the word of cutting, Pastor. <laughs> you just said what Jesus told. You say like a two-edged sword. Yeah. You got yeah. to trust it yeah. when you don't see it. Yeah. You got to trust it when your ship is sinking. Thank you. You know, like Paul said, grab a grab a boat. Stay on, just float on. Yeah. Stay with you. Stay with you. Yeah, Lord. All right. How are you preaching right now? So all this other stuff, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But stay with Jesus. Yeah. I tell you, I'm happy this morning. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to get discouraged. I was trying to put on my stockings and couldn't bend over nothing, but I just kept on. I got them on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. Yes. His his blood that he shed that saved. Yes. And I don't have to have a pity. No, you don't. To say, hey, I am rich. Yes. For my father is the king. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let me know I'm rich. Absolutely. Thank you, Mother. Which is the basis of this whole this whole book. The basis of this whole book is all that you have. All that you have in Christ Jesus. And so it's just perfect. It's just perfect. A great segue into this. And so uh Paul says, Look, 
The middle wall of partition that was between us has been broken down. In verse 15, he says, having abolished in his flesh, the enmity abolished, abolished, abolished. What does that mean? Done away with, done away with. Don't, don't be trying to bring it up because it's been done away with, having abolished in his flesh the enmity even the law of commandments contained in ordinance, ordinances for to make in himself of twain one new man so making peace. So what? The cause of the enmity, it tells us right there, was the law. The law. Because the law was, it helped to make a distinction between the Jews and the Gentiles, which kept them in that favored that favored position, which gave them bragging rights about we are the circumcision. We have something that y'all don't have. We have uh, the covenants. We have the promises. We have the patriarchs. And so the dietary laws reminded the Jews that God had put a difference. God had put a difference. He had put a difference between the clean and unclean. Uh, the ordinances that was given by God to Israel, that's what stood as a wall, you couldn't get over it. You couldn't get over it. You had to try to keep the laws. God said, this is my standard. That's what he told them. If you do this, then you're going to be blessed. Isn't that what he said? If you do this, you're going to be blessed. He said that to Israel. But if you don't, you'll be cursed with a curse. And so there was a wall. We said we talked about that in the temple, and I showed you the uh, illustration of the actual wall that actual, actually separated them. But now that's been done away with. And it was made possible by the blood of Jesus. Made possible by the blood of Jesus. Can I make this point? You can. It seems to me that keeping the law never was an entranceway into heaven. Okay? It was a, a condition as to the blessings or the curse. Because they were to keep the law in order to be a light, uh -huh. in order to show the rest of the world who God really mm -hmm, was. Mm -hmm. But it never was meant to justify them before God. That was done once a year on your, when, when the Day of Atonement. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was always, there's, there's no remission of sin without the shedding of blood. So then the animals... Blood was used in order to justify them to God. It just shows you how far off that our theology and our doctrine has been because all my life and all I ever hear when I go to other churches is, if you live right, you'll go to heaven. When it was always on the basis of blood, even under the law, it was the shedding of blood, them placing their faith in the blood that was shed. Absolutely. Thank you, Pastor Bland. And so um, I've shown you the figure of the temple, shown you the wall that separated everyone. You remember uh, in Acts 21 where they thought Paul had brought uh, uh, someone into the temple where they beat him. Uh, do you remember that? And so we won't even go there. But uh, in order for the Jews to be reconciled, that wall had to be destroyed. That wall had to be destroyed. And again, the only way that this was done, y'all, was uh, Jesus dying on the cross. The enmity is now gone and was taken care of by the blood of Jesus. Lady and Deborah, I just have to say this right here. Oh, my God. Oh, God, you're so good to me. You're so good to me. Yes. You're so good to me yes. that you would see fit to explain this to me. Instead of me just having to hear somebody grab their ear and talk about, he died. I don't, I mean, it feels good and it works on my emotions. But to actually, what, what, you're, what you're doing, you are giving me identity. Mm -hmm. You are showing me who I am. Yes. Yes. And the poor black man is lost now because he don't know who he is. My Lord. My Lord. Even in my house. The way mother nun that my mom and daddy would rein us in. We said, you are bland. Mm -hmm. You are bland. A person that don't have no identity, a person that don't know who they are, they pitiful. Yeah. All right. so true. 
They pitiful. You may be that, but if you don't know who you are, you lost. That's all back. Thank you, Pastor Bland. And so when we look at uh, Jesus' death, when we look at that, by fulfilling uh, the demands of the law in his righteous life, the only way that it could be fulfilled, because he's righteous, and by bearing the curse of the law in his sacrificial death, he removed that legal barrier, mm -hmm. what was, that separated Jew from Gentile. So, so Paul is trying to tell them, okay, yes, they did have a favored position, but now everyone is the same. Now everyone is the same. He has reconciled us. Right. He's brought us together. And so he, Brother Corman, is our peace. The Jew and the Gentile, you've been made now by the blood of Jesus. You've been made now by the blood of Jesus. And so the consequences of uh, the work on the cross, Christ's work on the cross, uh, destroying the enmity, abolishing the law, there's a new man. There's a new man. The, the Bible puts it like this. Look back at verse 15. It says, Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. That new man is the church, the body of Christ. The body of Christ. Christ, again, is our peace. Everybody say that. Christ is our peace. Christ is our peace. And I know sometimes the things we're going through, it seems like with peace is far from us. But Christ is our peace. He made peace. And he preached peace. He preached peace. Uh, it's good to know. It's good to know. Now, as a judge, he could have come and he could have declared war. Uh -huh. But in grace, he came and his message was a message of peace, Amen. a message of peace. And so now there is unification, uh, what the Jews and the Gentiles are in Christ Jesus. And, and uh, look at verse 16, and that he might reconcile, bring together both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. And came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were not. Those that were afar off, the Gentiles, those that were not, the Jews, now they're together. For through him, we both have access. By how many spirits? By one spirit unto the Father. Now, Therefore, ye are no more strangers, no strangers, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. So when somebody come up to you trying to charge you, trying to tell you that you can't do that because you're not like I am, you don't have what I have, they can't charge you because you're the same. But you have to know that. You have to know that. You cannot stand up and confident and tell them you don't know what you're talking about unless you know that. And you got to believe that and believe it by faith. Yeah. You got to have faith to know that what God did for me, God did it. You had nothing to do with it. You had nothing to do with it. And so you're no more strangers, but your fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Being the chief cornerstone. In whom all the building fitly framed together. So you got a cornerstone. Carl Ray, what, t t tell us about a cornerstone. What's the purpose of a cornerstone? I know I kind of caught you off guard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a landmark. That's a landmark. That's where you start. 
Uh, okay. All right. Okay. All right. So what are, what are y'all telling me? Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone? What, is that, what does that say to you? Thank you, Brother Carl Ray. I, 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 <laughs> thank you, Brother Carl Ray. And thank you all for helping Brother Carl Ray out. And we help us one to another. Amen. You started right there. You started right there. And if the cornerstone is messed up, something's going to be messed up. Something's going to be messed up. And so the house is, is fitly, the frame is fitly, rightly. It's done right. It's done right. Fitly joined together. You know, and so um, I love this because it uh, lets me know that uh, God had a plan. Yeah. You know, he started out the plan. You know, we go all the way back to Genesis where he gave the covenant to Abraham. He said this, I'm making a difference, you know, and letting them know you can circumcise in, in your flesh, but it's not, it, it's just a, it's just a symbol. I'm going to have y'all to do Absolutely. Do Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, yeah, we know all. No. Absolutely. All day long, you circumcise, be circumcised in the flesh. The real circumcision comes in your heart. That's right. Absolutely, and I'm going to end here. Uh, it says, "In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit." Mm-hmm. Great study. Uh, we'll pick up with chapter three next Sunday. Give the Lord a hand. Praise everybody. Yeah.